cardiologist also that is ecg but what i can tell you after this even if you know this much ecg at least you can able to diagnose the 80 to 90% problem and at least you can tell there is some abnormality in there actually okay so what i suggest just give little time to the ecg also uh, although it's a very small thing difficult so many hospitals are not having even the easy machine also but better to do at least you'll get so much insight into the hemodynamics of that actually okay so first if you need to ecg so you need see i am going concomitantly both so if you need the ecg you need to know the uh, basic paper if you see the ecg paper it will be like this so there are so many big boxes out of every big box there are five print like this five forty or five so there is a small box and the big box if you understand this concept in that this axis there will be voltage or amplitude and this axis there will be time so if you understood these two concepts you are able to see so whatever you are taking that's why all interval like qt interval pr interval we are taking on this horizontal axis well, all voltages R wave, T wave, what is the amplitude that we are taking on this a vertical axis. So, the other two important concepts. So, this one big box is how much is around 0.2 second if you see what in the horizontal plane. And if you see the small one, two, three, four, five, this smallest box is 0.4, that is 40 millisecond. So, if you understood this, then you are able to diagnose the all problems during the ECC. Okay. And second thing, in the same way, in the small boxes, if you see in the vertical, where vertical is a voltage, it's come with a 0.1 millivolt. And if you go, it's will be 0.5 millivolt for that actually. So if you see in this, it's very clearly shown, it's a 0.2 second, but it's a small squares are the one which is known as 40 milliseconds or the 0.1 millivolt. So this you have to understand. If you understand this, then you are so many. That's why if you see in this slide, the vertical plane, the vertical plane, if you see this, is the time and this is the voltage. If you understood those two concepts, vertical axis, voltage, V for V, you, you can remember like that. So now, in the same way, one I told the same thing, one small box is 0 0.04 second, one large box is 0.2 second vertically, one large box is 0.5 millivolt and the one small box is 0.1 millivolt. So, so when we are talking about the voltage, I'll explain the concept of that. When you talk about the voltage, that is equal to the mass. That means more the mass, more the mass of the volume of the heart or the mass of the heart, that means voltage will move. That's why in the LVH, you will get the wide, big, big, big complexes. Or RVH, you are getting the big, big complexes. While you are talking about the horizontal plane, the speed. So that's why when you are talking about this, you are talking about the PR interval, you are talking about the long QT syndrome, QT interval. All. Okay. So now this is the first concept. Second concept is very easy. Now what I'll ask you. If one of the uh, person, if you see this, whichever the heavier, the balance will tilt over that. In the same way in the heart, whichever ventricle has got the more mass, the vector, that means that will show the maximum deflection, that will show the more voltage. For example, in neonate, RV volume and RV mass is more. So that's why RVH and the right ventricular forces are common in the neonate. In the same way in the adult, LV mass is the more, that's why LV voltages are more in the adult. So this is the simple, but to do anything, this, you have to understand one concept that is known as the Ethan's triangle. I won't go deep into that physiology of that, but just I want to tell you one thing. Consider your heart in the center. See, okay. SC, AVC, pulmonary artery, LV, LA, this is SC. Okay, so if you see this triangle, okay, so there are 12 leads. So what are the meaning of 12 leads? So there are few leads which will do, which will connect on the right and left. So if you connect anything here and there between the two limbs, that, that will show right and left things, changes in the right and left side of the heart. Okay, and that will show, and if some lead from upper to lower, that will show the superior and inferior, whatever changes happen in the vertical direction of the heart will show. But it will not show what has happened between anterior to posterior, because the leads are not between anterior and posterior. For that, you need the chest lead. So that's what the concept of the chest lead came, when the limb leads are there, six limb leads are there. 
that is the lead one to ra la lead to ra to a left over limb and the left over limb to la why left over limb because we want to do heart on the left side so we want to get the more changes on the left side and the reference will be the right lower limb so once you do the heart is into the center of that so lead one between this one this is two and lead three this is so then what happened this is one concept but what happened we need some more voltages which can do so that's why we did the augmented leads so we continue the three augmented leads so that is known as the augmented lead avl avr and avf so once you do see this is the augmented lead. in between these two will take one more lead in in these between will take one more lead and from the lower to upper we move one more lead so that it will cover more superior inferior forces so these are known as the augmented lead so you have to remember this diagram of the heart see suppose the heart is in center okay so this is your lead one so lead one is between here so we'll take this as the lead one plane of the lead one so this is the positive end of the lead one this is a negative end. second we are taking the lead two lead two is between this so that's why it's lead two is always from the here to here okay so if you make this center if you make this vertical like this so lead one will be here lead two will be here positive end of the lead two and lead three is between these two leads so that's why it's come between here okay so positive end negative end okay so if you have to remember after that your avl will come so avl will come here avr will come here and avf will exactly come into the center okay so that's why you remember these diagram these are the three leads in the same direction you see this one two av what is the importance of this if you know this if you know this then now you know if i am standing here this is my heart actually this is my heart so lead one positive will be here avf will be here lead two will be in the 60 degree lead three will be 120 degree lead r will be 270 degree and lead three will be minus 30 so if you know if you know this concept you where this lead at what angle so this is the angle zero for lead one this is 60 degree lead avf 90 degree lead c 120 degree this is 270 degree this is minus 30 degree if you know this six lead concept then it's very easy to interpret the ecg i'll tell you how so this is the first concept second thing i told you these are all the two dimensional plane where it will show right and left changes and upper and superior changes but nobody leads it no leads are telling the entro posterior that's how we need put a chest lead if you see this the chest lead if you see this the heart is there we are putting chest lead over the sternum so it will catch the changes in the right ventricle lead 3 4 it will changes take the changes in the ivs septum lead 5 6 it will detect the changes in the left ventricle that's what once you are taking the chest lead so that's when the v1 v2 is showing the entro posterior changes okay between of the rv v2 v3 or v4 will change the septum and v4 v5 v6 will change the uh your lv forces so if you understood this concept so now there are three this concept is very good you can see this diagram so the avl the chest lead looks in the horizontal plane like ap and limb lead of the heart in the vertical plane and again the augmented lead will in the different so you will get the different direction so that's what we need the 12 leads to do the all direction of the heart to be covered so now this is simple now this is the one concept second thing any electrical stimulus any electrical flow which has got this flat line that means there is no stimulus okay that means the potential is zero any positive means the deflection is coming towards that and the negative means is deflection is going away from that so that is in the negative is flowing away so that is the in general okay so now this is a one concept so now you have to understand that is known as the heart cartesian system where the six leads mainly six leads 1 2 avf 3 avr and avl how it is placed you should know and second thing whenever there is no activity it will be played so now we'll start now we'll start with the basic concept so you can go in the lot of physics and all but this is the basic concept now again we'll make a heart in the center so it's easy to understand This is R A. This is S V C. L A. 
shall be have it. So we have to understand the SA node is here between SVC RA junction, which is the and now again you understood the concept of that what the lead side told. EVF one, two, three, AVR, AVH. So now it's a very simple. See, now the events in the cardiac cycle, you can see it starts from the SA node. So what is the definition of sinus rhythm? Any rhythm which is generated by the SA node is called the sinus. So rhythm will go from here to here. Okay, so now which leads will give positive towards the which the deflections are going. So all two, three AVF will give positive. While the AVR, because the stimulus is going away from AVR, it will show negative. So we'll take rhythm two. Why we are taking rhythm two as a rhythm strip always? Because it's in the direction of the heart. Heart direction always lies in the lead two. Okay, so that's why lead two is considered to be the rhythm strip because the vector of the heart from the SA nodes is always go towards in this direction. That's why lead two is considered to be the rhythm strip. So now anything generated from here, suppose I am taking rhythm lead two, so it's positive deflection. It will dial, it will come like this. Now what happened? This is known as the isolating. After that, there is a depolarization wave of the atrium, and then what happened after that? This the, this produce the P wave. So because SA node is on the right side, the initial portion of the P wave corresponds to the RA and later portion corresponds to the LA. Now second, what happened? There is an AV node here. The stimulus will stay over there. There won't be any activity. That's what after that there will be PR interval. And what happened after this? This is the septum. Septum is thick like this. Okay. So what happened after this? If you can see, what happened? The stimulus will go from the left towards the right of the septum. So what happened? It's going away from two. So that's why it will develop the Q wave. After that, because LV is more prominent, it will come and it will show that. So you have to understand from where the vector is going away and which leads towards the vector is coming. So first, Q wave corresponds to the septal depolarization from left to right. That's why it's going away from two. That's why it's coming negative. While well, after that, it will stimulate more LV mass. That's what it's causing that. So this is you have to understand the concept QRS. And then if it's a total, it will go to the right side also. That will give rise to total. Once it go towards the right, then it will show the negative in that. So that's what the wave of depolarization Q wave corresponds to the septal wave. So after that, this will form the QRS. And then again, there will be some stresses because there won't be any activity. And then there will be depolarization, repolarization wave. When again it goes towards it, going towards the two wave, that's what it's going to the resting point, it will cutting the T wave. So if you understood this concept, now you can see this system. One is zero degree. You have to remember this. If you want to learn ECG, remember this zero, 60, 90, this is 120. This is 270, this is minus 30. If you understand, you can see this. Okay. So this is the system where the heart, you can see how the heart will come in between. So now the first concept of the ECG will come. So if you understood there, again, I will draw this for your more understanding. This is the heart. RV. SNO, AV node, LA. And now you have to remember the leads. One, AV, F, two, three, AV, R. All things depends on that. So now, first thing, now we have to determine the axis. So suppose, what is the axis? Axis is where the heart is going. So if you remember this, we can easily divide heart electrical axis into electrical into four quadrants, one and AVF. Because one is exactly at the zero degree and AVF exactly. So this is all looking the left lower quadrant. You can tell like that. This is like the right lower quadrant. This is known as the right upper quadrant. And this is known as the left upper quadrant. So if you understood this, so any axis of the QRSS comes in this, that is left axis division. This is normal. This is right axis division and this is extreme right axis division. If you understand that concept, it will be easy. Now, this I leave. So now there is simple, the basic rules. 
So I told you vector towards any positive. Suppose S is not coming from here to here, so it's going towards the two lead. So it will show positive deflection. Why right? it is away from A V R? It will show negative deflection. Okay, and anything which is perpendicular, like anything which is going to perpendicular to the, that will show the equiphasic or no deflection. So this is the general concept. Now in fact, if now we are we want to see the neonate and we are going. Towards the end. So in neonate, what is happening in neonate? The R V H is there normally. Then L R V is more prominent. That's why neonate has got a neonate got a small mass. So that's why their Q R S voltage is small as compared to adult. This is adult. This is neonate. Second thing, their T wave also will be small. Okay, R V dominant. So they will show the more R V changes. Whichever lead is having R V uh, corresponds to R V show more changes. Okay, and then. And in that's why in neonate R V axis severe R V axis only is abnormal up to R right axis deviation is normal. So these are the concerns. And as the infant grow, more and more mass and volume of the heart will added. That's why your Q R S will. In second thing in neonate, there the the circulation is very fast tachycardia. That's why their P R interval. If you see P Q R S, so their P R interval is very less. So as we go, the heart rate will become normal. Or become slow. That's why their their PR interval increases. So if the concept comes, that's why this is normally asked in exam. Okay, what is the difference between neonatal adult heart? So neonatal heart, the heart rate is more. Heart rate is more. So that's why their all all their durations are less. PR is less. QT is except QT because QT is prolonged in the neonate, but the QR all. These dimensions are less, but the QRS is small as compared to the adult because in adult more volume and mass will be added. So this is the difference. And in neonates, RV is more dominant will be there than LV. In adult, LV will be more dominant. So okay, so this is all we cannot. And with increases, I already told heart rate will increase, all duration and interval increases. RV dominance gradually change to LV. QRS, which is in the right axis division, change to left axis division. So this is the That's what. And second thing, when we are talking about pediatric cardiology and the ECG, there are so many complex heart diseases, which is dextrocardia. That's why in all pediatric age, you have to take the right leads also. So in pediatric age, or neonatal, always take right leads. Use small electrodes because big electrodes will cause the problem. There are small electrodes are coming. You have to change the basic nature. What I told up to that. Okay, so these are the differences. So now we'll play in QRT. So now I'll ask you one question. Now there are from few uh, this uh, what should I call? There are some uh, you can see on there. There are some quiz and some exercise. So we'll make this diagram always. Always remember this diagram. If you remember this diagram, and what is the relation of the leads? So we lead all. Forget all leads. We'll remember four quadrant: right, left, upper quadrant. Right upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, left lower quadrant, and this is the two lead at the 60 degree A V F at 90 degree, L at minus 30 degree, A V R S plus 270 degree, and C at 120 degree. So if you remember that, this will be easy. So now there are very common question we everyone may ask: Ki what is sinus rhythm? So the sinus rhythm the definition is any rhythm. Which is generated by sinus node, S A node. Suppose after surgery or anything, sinus node dysfunction is there. So the next pacemaker will be A V node. After that, bundle of is after that branch is then ventricle. So that's why in heart the main pacemaker is S A node followed by A V node followed by right bundle and the ventricle. So any rhythm which is generated by S A node is known as the sinus rhythm. So sinus rhythm the definition is. Because one beat will come here, the one should go. So one is to one ratio. One P followed by one Q R S. And second thing, axis because it will go this. So the axis should be always between zero to ninety degree. So if axis is here or axis is up, that means it's not side. Either the beat is generated from left side or beat is generated from lower. That's why it's going up. So any sinus rhythm definition is every P followed by Q R S and it should be lie in the To zero to ninety degree plane. So see, this is the first example. Now, for your sake, two things. Now, now the last one more concept is I forgot to tell. What is the difference between pressure and volume only? So pressure. 
See, pressure overload, most common condition is aortic stenosis PF. What happened? Pressure is stenosis, there, there will be hypertrophy. So, your R wave will very much increase. And because of the pressure, same coronary has to supply the more mass. There is a mild ischemic change. So, that's why there is a ST change. So, any pressure overload, there will be deep Q, big R, but there will be ST changes. Is there. These are the typical of pressure overloaded. Now, the volume overloaded because there is volume only increase, no ischemia sign because it has to supply the same myocardium. Only the P, QRS will increase and the T also will increase. Here in pressure over T will be inverted while in that it will T will be elevated. So this is a pressure difference. So this we have to see in the chest lead. Forget about limb lead. So limb leads when you are talking, you have to talk about 1, 2, 3, AVF, AVR, AVL. So whenever you do, forget every lead. Remember 1 and AVF so that you can able to see which quadrant is coming. So this is the first example. Now second thing is the heart rate. Suppose if this is the example, suppose you can see there are two big squares. The QRS between two big squares is 1.8. Okay, so that means 300 divided by 1.8, the heart rate is around 130. Otherwise, you can take between small square between two QR. So here it can see 5 and 8, 10. So around 150 heart rate is there. So that's how you can measure the heart rate and the P-axis. Now, the second thing, now QRS axis. This is the main thing if you are able to understand, then you can able to diagnose all conditions. So what happens is the first. If you consider first, you have to see whether it is a positive deflection or negative. If you see in this, there is a positive mean, positive deflection and resultant is a positive. That's why one lead will see. So whenever one lead positive deflection, it should come on this side. So that means it will come somewhere in between. Okay. Then if you see the AVF, AVF also is positive. So AVF positive will be in this direction, negative will be in this. So that means something it comes in between. That means whatever QRS axis is there, it's between 0 to 90 degree. So this is the one point. Now you can tell the QRS axis in the left lower quadrant. So this you can tell. And second thing, I already told, vector towards which the vector is going, that lead will show the maximum deflection. So third thing, after this, you see which of the limb leads has got the maximum deflection. If you see this example, lead 2 has got the maximum positive. That means the axis, QRS axis should be nearby there. So by both ways, either by the quadrant rule or by the maximum axis rule, we can tell that the QRS axis is near plus 60 degree. So this is easy to do. So that's why if you do like that, you'll be able to. You can have to remember this diagram. You see here, positive is on this side and then positive of the EVF on this side and this is the positive 60 degree. Okay. Now again play. It will be easy. Now if you see, I'll tell you what is the heart rate. There are three and a half big box. Around three big box. So 300 divided by big box or 1500 divided by small box. So small box is around 15. So it will come 100 per minute. Or big box is three. That means again 300 by 300. So heart rate is near about 100. In the same way, whether sinus rhythm or not, so again, to get the sinus rhythm, your P axis should be P in the positive in the 1 and positive in the AVF. So you can see in both 1 and AVF, P is positive. That means your axis is normal. P axis is sinus rhythm. Now with the QRS axis, you can see here 1 is negative only. So you have to not go both this side. And then F is positive. So it's towards this side. That means your axis is in the right axis deviation. So anything. If somebody give you ECG, first thing you have to ask, what is the age? Okay, because the same right axis deviation here is normal for neonate, but it's abnormal for adult. So you have to play like that. So once you do like that, like that, you see this example. The, and second thing is the third view. Okay, you can see again with the third rule, which has got the maximum deflection, the positive maximum deflection, the lead three, that means it's near about 120. That's why your axis is also near about 120 degree. So these are the two things you have to understand, so then your, it will be easy. So if you consider quadrant rule, so I told you if positive in the one, any QRS which is positive in the one and positive in the A, your QRS axis is between zero to 90 degree. Second thing, if any axis which is positive in one, but negative in F, that means it's coming on the left upper quadrant. That means your left axis deviation is present. Third thing, if, if one is negative 
and avf is positive that means it's coming in this quadrant that means the right axis deviation is present and once both are negative that means it's extreme axis that is known as no man's sky it will come this so once you understand this concept you can understand which chamber is getting dilated so that you are able to make it out well i'll rub this and again will make so you understand this to so make a heart always in the center Put one AVF, AVF. This is two, one positive AVF. This is AVR plus two seventy. This is ninety AVF. This is three one twenty. This is two sixty degree, and this is AVN minus thirty degree. If you understand this concept, it will be easy. Now these are the Different variation. If you, these are the various causes apart from congenital heart. This is what in the adult and left axis division cause in the ventricular pacing, emphysema, WPW, tricuspid atresia, ostium primum. So if you know this, then apart from that right axis division, what are the causes? Then it will be easy to do. So if you see in in congenital heart disease, they are very simple. Any axis which is superior means coming between zero to minus one eighty degree. Only five diagnoses with that. If you understand that. That is known as the AV canal defect, pulmonary atresia, intact IVS. Then third is tricuspid atresia and pulmonary stenosis and rubella and lunar. If you understand, these are the only four causes or ostium primum ASD. If you are doing this, then you only get to any ECG. If you get in the superior axis, superior axis is either both negative or one is positive and AVF is negative. That means this is the uh, differential diagnosis. So now I already told you what how the pressure overload looks like. Pressure overload looks like wide complexes with the broad and the ST depression, prolonged PR, and the deep Q. But in the volume there will be deep Q, QR wave, and the prominent T wave. But the complexes will be narrow. So basic rules I already told this with increasing age. So now if you say this is a neonate, very important. When you are doing the ECG, you should know. How to interpret from the monitor also? This is the one of the case. 25 days old with the tachypnea. They are about to intubate, but they are not seeing the ECG properly. If you see, what is the most problem in here? See, see this. The pulse oximeter plethysmograph is showing very small wave. That means the volume of the pulse is poor. There is a tachycardia 170. The tachypnea 53 heart rate. So, and this is. And you can see with the tachycardia, the T waves are very prominent. So what it turned out to be, rather than intubate, we checked the, we auscultated. There is a no tach, there is no retractions. There is no only the work of breathing. That means it's an acidotic breathing. So we just gave the IV bolus. We collected the potassium, and the child improved. And turned out to be the organic acidema. They thought it's a something else distress. So that's why the importance of ECG comes into the picture. Okay. So now these are the very important things. How the conduction system? See, it's not for you as a pediatrician. Normal conduction system, I told, SA node, AV node, bundle of phase, right bundle, left bundle, and ventricle. These are the complete. But in pediatric or in congenital heart disease, depends on different because sometimes the conduction will be. It's absent, or it will be double, or it will be displaced. So when you are seeing the conduction system in CHD is different and different. That's how it will get reciprocated on this axis. So once you do the axis, now we'll see some of the examples. Okay. So now again, I will give this. Just a minute. So now see this. This is a typical. This is the one patient. Although it's a three-month-old perineum, this comes with the distress. And now the saturation. So any CHD, any CHD divide into that cyanotic and non-cyanotic. Check your saturation and then divide. If you are cyanotic, you have to see only two things: increase flow, decrease flow. Increase flow, decrease flow. If you are increase flow, that will re represent as a plethora or increase vascularity. Decrease flow will represent as a oligemia. Okay. So now, what the issue is? After this, you need to see what is the diagnosis. Suppose you are seeing the excess cyanotic increase flow, but you don't know whether it's a what kind of the increase flow. What is the ECG? If you take help of the ECG, you're able to make diagnosis. So now, this is the ECG. Suppose this is a Down syndrome patient. 
this is a down syndrome patient you know what are the complex heart disease in the down syndrome presented with the respiratory distress so now again with the same we'll go the lead one lead one you can see there is a positive deflection mainly or it's a again it's a ep phase you can neither positive nor it will be exactly in the center but f is the negative so that means the axis is nearby in the superior either this side or this side so you see the maximum deflection maximum deflection is near the avl that means the axis is near avl so i told you if down syndrome with superior axis the superior axis is only five causes tricuspid atrial is our tricuspid atrial is synotic this child was asynotic with distress down syndrome and the superior axis so there are only two diagnoses in av canal or ostium primum defect asd usually will not present with symptoms so early to this is usually combination of asd and bsd av canal defect so once you know this will able to do okay so now this is the another for you are sorry now sometimes sometimes we not seen anything problem suppose this is a very bizarre rhythm so somebody told one week old in chicken antenatal history shock but what is the problem so you have to go with the nals and pals any rhythm problem any rhythm problem first you have to go with your concept of 4h40 whether any the hyperkalemia is there hypokalemia is there or hypocalcemia is there hypercalcemia is there or this also in this whenever there is a electrical abnormality you see your ventilator suppose on ventilator check the ventilation check electrical here they thought it's a very complex heart disease lv dysfunction is but lv dysfunction is because of the severe acidosis and hyperkalemia and this is a typical sign leo pattern and when we check the potential turn out to be the nine and after correction of that will do it improve so now i'll tell you the case scenario suppose this is 3 month old admitted with breathing difficulty recent rti feeble pulses respiratory distress no organomegaly neote about to intervene waiting for x ray and this is there now again we'll go with our same concept okay i won't go with no no sorry so now you see between two see between two big box there is only one two ara there is only one big box 300 divided by 1 so that means there is a heart rate is around 300 so as per the nals and pals any neonate with heart rate more than 220 any infant or low little younger more than 200 and and in adult and adults and more than 180 is considered to be the tachycardia and then it that tachycardia is related to your svt so here we'll see the heart rate is 300 so it is turned out to be the svt now when we check the equate turned out to be the normal so svt also you have to understand when this 300 then you have to check so now the another thing now this is very simple now this is the one how you will take the help of the ec there is a 10 days old refer to rule out any abnormality of that of two siblings so now there is one different method we are using for long qt because there is one of the very common referral what we are getting from the neurologist so what is the first you have to do any qt interval if you see this is the slide qt any qt interval more than half of rl interval is always prolonged suppose you are it's not half so then you have to do the tangent method so once somebody asks what is the method used for calculating the qrs correctly qt interval that is known as the tangent method so to due to tangent suppose this is your i'll measure this is q r so now the concept is you have to take t here 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 so the concept is you have to put a line from baseline and then you have to put tangent suppose if you measure here your qt you will overestimate if you measure in underestimate so once with the tangent method you will correctly you will correctly measure the qt okay so that's how you have to measure the qt interval so now same now if you see now this is a 12 year old girl come with the mr so now again you go with the same thing now one is positive or negative first the p in the one is positive p in the avs is positive that means sn node is coming from here is a sinus rhythm and same one the q one is positive and avf is also positive okay and avl is also positive these three are positive that means axis is the left axis division is the superior axis okay so it turn out to be the any coronary abnormality which is causing the al kappa in this so any al kappa coct any lv dysfunction you have to take help of the ecg to detect the this now now this is see, there is very simple thing. 
Now this is three days old, symptomatic with mild respiratory disease, diagnosed top absent pulmonary wall, dilated RVOT. This is the reason. One of our colleagues, they want to prescribe the pacemaker, but you see one is ectopic. You have to see the one bit. What are the yellows is the P wave and the white are the ectopic. So because of the severe PSPR, your axis is getting, your RVOT is getting, giving rise to ectopic. So whenever this is known as ectopic rhythm, ectopic rhythm, the diff Typical differentiation is the QRS is always wide. So this actor will, after starting proton, this rhythm settles. So what we thought of, we'll have to do the pacemaker because of the low heart rate, because the QRS and the monitor is speaking only the big, big complexes. It's showing only 60 heart rate, but actually the heart rate is 120. And what the 60 ectopic heart rate, it's measuring. So it's not the heart block, it's just the ectopic, which is causing because of the dilated RAR. So after we started enteral, it becomes settled. So now there are a few things. I'll explain. So now once you do, there are some uh, different CHD now. This is the one month old with the history of sinusitis since birth. Even the we diagnosed at the sinotic in the neonatal, but the loss to follow. So what happened if you see here, the axis turns out to be, if you see the same token, C1 and AVF, one P is positive and AVF P is positive. That means the P axis comes here. That means it's like the SA node is lying normally. In the same way, the one is positive was AVF is negative. So now once you see the superior axis, again, I told you the same example, the superior is the four causes, common AV wall or complete AV canal, osteum primum, tricuspid atresia, PS in dysplastic area. So this is once in the sinusis since birth, so you have to take health with your clinical thing. Sinusis since birth is tricuspid atresia, single ventricle, TGA, but the superior axis turns to tell you that it's a tricuspid atresia. So without echo also, you're able to tell what is that actually. So this is the very important concept. So now, uh, again, suppose this heart rate, suppose this is the ECG. You can see this ECG again will go with the same token. One is positive, F is positive, P axis is normal. That means S node is situated normally. But here the one is negative and AV and AVF is also in the maximum deflection is on the three side. That means the uh, RVH is there, and you can see there is a splintered complex. Means the all QRS are broken, and with the with, if, in presence of this gross cardiomyopathy is broken, and the oligemia lung field. If you know this is the typical of Epstein's anomaly, so this is found out to be the Epstein's. You can see is the same in the eight year old also. So this is not for you because it's new and it's added. So. So now this is the one of the, what is the diagnosis here? Because we are putting the ECG release, which is for the adult. This is causing the, because the glue is very stick and the sensitive skin, it will cause. So you have to put a small electrode, which is meant only for neonate. So what I want to tell, this is just the first part of the ECG because my concept is to just my, I want to tell you the concept of how the quadrant is there, how to measure the axis and how will the QRS. So next time we'll exactly do what is the whole PS in the neonate, AV canal in the neonate, VSD, how it looks like. The concept because easy itself is a very broad topic. So to cover everything in a one, it's a difficult. So just why, what my concept to tell you that key, just to see how the lead placement one, two, AVF, how the heart lies, what is the concept of sinus rhythm, how the pressure overload and the volume overload looks, what are the concept for chest lead and what the concept of this limb leads. So once you know that, now for the next time, we'll just specifically, we'll check again, what are the all synotic and the asynotic and what are the changes in the synotic and synotic heart disease with the ECG. So thanks a lot for your kind uh, listening. So this is the first part of the ECG. Second part will continue with the disease protocol.